Hey guys, it's Jasma, and today we're going to make a layered matcha cake with whipped cream frosting, and we're going to decorate it with some white chocolate candy melts to create a really different look. This is a really simple cake to put together, so first make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit so that it's ready to go once this batter is ready. This is a really moist cake that's not super overpowering with matcha flavor, but it has a really nice balance with the frosting as well. Make sure you have your cake pans ready as well. I'm making two six inch cakes and then I'm going to cut it in half so we have four layers by the end. And make sure you line it with parchment paper on the bottom so that it comes out easily after it's baked. Now we can move on to preparing our dry ingredients. So I'm going to sift together my all purpose flour to make sure there are no clumps in it and to add a little more air into the overall mixture. To the sifted flour, add in the baking powder, salt, baking soda, and stir everything until it's evenly combined. Alright, now onto the wet ingredients. So here I have a big bowl. To the bowl, add in the melted coconut oil, as well as any flavorless oil. Then add the white granulated sugar to the oil and mix it until it's combined. I like to add the matcha powder directly into this mixture because I find that the white granulated sugar prevents the matcha powder from clumping up too much. Stir until there are no more matcha clumps within the mixture and then add in three eggs one at a time. You want to stir each egg in until it completely disappears into the mixture before adding the next. Add in the sour cream and mix that until it's combined as well. Once the sour cream is fully mixed in, we're going to combine this with the dry ingredients. Make sure not to overmix the batter because you don't want the cake to become too dense. Once the batter is smooth, pour it into the two cake pans that we prepared earlier. Make sure you fill each cake pan evenly so that we have two cakes the same size. My cakes has baked in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 minutes. To test if it is done, just insert a toothpick or a knife into the center, and if it comes out without any batter sticking to it, that means it's cooked completely. So I've allowed them to cool on a cooling rack completely because you don't want a warm cake to be decorated or it's going to melt the icing. So now I'm going to take them out of the cake pans and then level it. To release the cake from the pan, take a butter knife or a offset spatula and just run it around the side. Be careful that you're not cutting into the cake, you just want to loosen it away from the pan. I'm going to be making a four layer cake, so since I have two cakes, I'm just going to cut them in half so that I have my layers. You can either use a cake leveler or a serrated knife like I am here to level the cakes. Now we can move on to making the frosting for this cake. So I'm making a simple whipped cream frosting with a little more matcha in it, so it has a light green color and a mild matcha flavor. To ensure that the matcha powder gets combined into the frosting without creating too many lumps, I'm going to mix the icing sugar, heavy cream, and matcha powder into a smooth paste before adding it into the rest of the cream. I ended up adding one and a half teaspoons of matcha powder to achieve the green color that I wanted, but this is very flexible so you can add as much or as little depending on how deep the color you want it to be. I placed my stand mixer bowl and the whisk into the fridge for a little bit so that it's now really nice and cold. And you also want to make sure the whipped cream was just taken out of the fridge so that it whips up a lot easier. So I'm going to add this into the bowl. Mix the cream on medium low speed until it starts to thicken up. Add in half of the matcha mixture and keep mixing until soft peaks form. Then add in the rest of the matcha mixture and mix until the frosting forms stiff peaks. Make sure not to overmix. Frosting is now ready so we can assemble the cake. So I have a turntable here to make the decorating process a little easier, but if you don't have one, you can just decorate on any serving platter. I also have an offset spatula and an ice cream scoop to evenly distribute the icing um, and make sure I have the same amount for every layer. So I'm going to start off by placing a small dowel of frosting on the center of the platter so the cake sticks. Place on the first layer of cake and press it down to make sure it doesn't move around too much. 
Scoop a couple scoops of the frosting onto the cake layer and spread it out until it's nice and even. Place on the second layer of cake and make sure it's nice and secured. And scoop on more frosting. When you're decorating the cake and spreading the frosting in between each layer, make sure you don't touch the cake with the spatula and this prevents it from mixing the crumbs into the frosting. Once the layers are filled, cover the entire cake with the leftover frosting. Put a layer thick enough so you can no longer see the layers of cake through the frosting. Smooth it out using offset spatulas and bench scrapers. You can use different tools as well to help you. The cake is now smooth, um, the sides are nice and straight, and you can no longer see through the frosting. So I'm going to place this into the fridge for it to chill while I work on the decorations for the top. Finally, we can do the decorations for the top. So here I have some white chocolate candy melts, and I'm just going to melt it into the microwave, stirring in between every once in a while until it is completely smooth. Melt the chocolate until it is completely smooth, stirring in between. It took me two 45 second intervals for it to become completely smooth and ready. Pour it onto a flat surface. I'm using a piece of reusable parchment paper, but you could also use a silicone mat. Work really fast because the chocolate will set really quickly, especially if the counter is really cold. So smooth it out with a uh, offset spatula, or you can just wiggle it around until the chocolate has smoothed itself out to around the same size of the top of the cake, or even bigger than that. Then just let it sit until it becomes nice and firm and snappy. So break it up into uneven pieces, um, nice and small or big, you want to vary in size. Before I decorate the cake, I'm going to transfer it onto a platter, um, and I'm going to be using a offset spatula to do this. So I transferred my leftover whipped cream into a Ziploc bag, snipped off the tip, and then I'm just going to squeeze little dollops on top of the cake where I want to place the chocolate. And this creates an interesting illusion of the chocolate almost floating on top of the cake. So that's it with this matcha cake. I really like how the decoration turned out. It looks like I broke a plate on top of the cake and I'm not mad about it. I think this technique would work really well for other desserts as well. So I really hope you could try these out and play around with it and see what you create. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.